الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله brothers and sisters in islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. The inevitable journey must be told for the ummah to go back to their Lord and in order to do the work of Allah subhanahu wa taala that Allah subhanahu wa taala entrusted them with. Brothers and sisters in Islam, one of the greatest inevitable what one of the greatest certainties that we will die all of us will die Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran كل نفس ذائقة الموت وإنما توفون أجوركم يوم القيامة فمن زحزح عن النار وأدخل الجنة فقد فاز وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور every single soul shall taste death and indeed your rewards your recompense will be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of resurrection and indeed the one who will be moved away from the hellfire and admitted to paradise is the successful one brothers and sisters in Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Quran وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ You have the best character, the best manner. And at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him in the Quran, إِنَّكَ مَيِّتْ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ You will die and they will die. If there is someone who deserves eternity in the face of this earth, would have been Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised his character in the Quran. في حلية الأولياء أبو نعيم حديث سهل بن سعد الساعدي رضي الله عنه The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that Jibreel came to him and he told him يا محمد O Muhammad عش ما شئت فإنك ميت Live as long as you want to live You will die وأحبب من شئت فإنك مفارقه Love whomever you want to love Love whatever you want to love You will leave it وعمل ما شئت فإنك مجزم به And do as you please Do as you want You will be held accountable for what you do وَاعْلَمْ أَنَّ عِزَّ الْمُؤْمِنِ وَاعْلَمْ أَنَّ شَرَفَ الْمُؤْمِنِ قِيَامُهُ اللَّيْءِ وَعِزُّهُ اسْتِغْنَاؤُهُ عَنِ النَّاسِ الحديث Brothers and sisters in Islam When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the angel of death and the hadith في صحيح البخاري من حديث أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه for the second time to موسى عليه السلام Musa alayhi salam, once he heard from the angel of death that he could live as many years as his hand would cover if he would place it, if he would place it on the back of an ox. So many years. The angel of death told him, place your hand on a back or on the back of an ox, an animal. And the many pieces of hair that your hand will cover 
on the back of that animal for each piece you will live one year Musa alayhi salam told the angel of death then what he said then you will die Musa alayhi salam said now let's do it now so regardless of how long you live you will die brothers and sisters in Islam you cannot flee from death Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ Say to them, O Muhammad, that death that you flee off, it will meet you. You cannot protect yourself from death. أَيْنَمَا تَكُونُوا يُدْرِكُمُ الْمَوْتُ وَلَوْ كُنْتُمْ فِي بُرُوجِ مُشَيَّدَةِ Wherever you are, death will overtake you. Even if you place yourselves on high elevated fortified fortress, death will come to you. Brothers and sisters in Islam, everyone will die. The ins and the jinn will die. في صحيح البخاري كتاب التوحيد حديث ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to make that beautiful dua Allahumma inni a'udhu bi'izzatika Allahumma inni a'udhu bi'izzatika O Allah, I seek refuge with your glory La ilaha illa ant Alladhi la yamut Wal jinnu wal insu yamutun And jinn kind and mankind die But you do not die Brothers and sisters in Islam not even your family members, not even those who surround you at the time of your death, who surround your bed at the time of your death, can help you. فَلَوْلَا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ الْحُلْقُومِ وَأَنْتُمْ حِينَ إِذٍ تَنْظُرُونَ And when the soul reaches the throat, and the people who are surrounding the deceased are looking at him, وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبْصِرُونَ But we are closer to him than you. Our angels who came to take his soul, the angel of death, are closer to you than you, family members, you friends, you neighbors. فَلَوْلَا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ غَيْرَ مَدِينِينَ If you are truthful, تَرْجِعُونَهَا إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Stop that soul from leaving the body. Surah Al-Waqi'ah And this is Tafsir Al-Imam Al-Tabari رحمه الله Brothers and sisters in Islam Surah Al-Qiyamah Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala said كَلَّا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ التَّرَاقِيَ وَقِيلَ مَنْ رَاق And nay When the soul reaches the cooler bone Again, the exit of the body. It will be said, who can cure him? This is the view of Ibn Abbas عنهما, regarding that question. No one, brothers and sisters in Islam. So, إِنَّكَ مَيِّتٌ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ وَمَا جَعَلْنَا لِبَشَرٍ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ الْخُلْدَ أَفَإِنْ مِتَّ فَهُمُ الْخَالِدُونَ we have never granted any human being before you, O Muhammad, eternity. Will, you, will they then be granted that eternity? It is a fact. It is a certainty. Brothers and sisters in Islam, but the one thing that we need to understand and realize that death is not the end. Death announces the end of one of, the one of the phases of the inevitable journey. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Inshiqaq, Ya ayyuha al-insan, innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadahan famulaqih. O mankind, you are in a state of constant travel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, the life of this world is one phase 
death announces the end of that phase but at the same time it announces the beginning of another phase which is the life in the graveyard Hayatul Barzakh is another phase of that inevitable journey brothers and sisters in Islam yes and in Al Barzakh in the graveyard there will be there will be a life a life from Jannah or a life from hell in Hadith Al Bara Ibn Azib رضي الله عنه and the Hadith في مستدرك الحاكم the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described described for us for the Ummah what happens to the deceased after he is placed underneath the ground two angels come to him and the wording with the Imam al-Tirmidhi in one of the ahadith that addresses the same issue Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam named those two angels and he described them Munkar and Nakir they come to terrify intimidate the deceased and they ask him those three questions who is your Lord what is your deen what do you say about the man who was sent to you three questions sound very easy but only those who will be granted steadfastness will be able to answer and you will only be granted that steadfastness by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and upon answering a caller will call Sadaq Abdi if the deceased says my Lord is Allah my deen is in Islam and the man who was sent to me is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a caller will call my servant spoke the truth furnish his graveyard from Jannah clothe him from Jannah open for him a gate to Jannah that hole in the ground becomes a garden from paradise if he fails if he was not granted that steadfastness a caller will call he lied furnish his graveyard from the hellfire clothe him from the hellfire open for him a gate to the hell the hellfire yes there is a life in the graveyard yes it could be a Jannah it could be a hell and that is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us to make dua for the deceased who is buried Allahumma ja'al qabrahu rawdatan min riyad al-jannah wa la taj'alhu hufratan min hufar al-niran O Allah make the graveyard of the deceased a garden from paradise and do not make it a hill a bit from the bits of the hell fire we will take a break we will be back the inevitable journey Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The scale of justice will be brought before man. Now you shall have to explain your whole life span. The scale of justice will be brought before man Now you shall have to explain your whole life span Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome back to the inevitable journey Before the break we talked about the second phase of the journey In brief Insha'Allah the purpose of that series is to detail each one of these phases and talk about it Insha'Allah but the second phase or the second certainty is Al Barzakh the hole that the people dig for you in the ground and place you into it brothers and sisters in Islam the Quran talked about that hole and named it Al Barzakh Hatta Ida Ja Ahadahumul Mautu Surah Al Mu'minun Kala Rabbir Jaun 
لعلي أعمل صالحا فيما تركت كلا إنها كلمة هو قائلها ومن ورائهم برزخ إلى يوم يبعثون until death would come to a disbeliever he will beg and say oh Allah can I go back can I have a second chance this is what a disbeliever this is what a disobedient will say at the time of death وأنفقوا مما رزقناكم من قبل أن يأتي أحدكم الموت فيقول رب and spend of what we bestowed upon you before death would come to one of you and he will say Rabb my Lord can I have a second chance can I have more time the same thing but the answer the request is denied Kalla, nay you know why innaha kalima it's just a word that is the nature of man he will forget again if they go back if they are granted if they are granted that second chance Allah is telling you that they will go back to do what they used to do then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees by saying وَمِنْ وَرَائِهِمْ بَرْزَخٌ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ They will stay in that barzakh until the day when they will be resurrected. The word barzakh was also used in another context in the Qur'an. Listen. مَرَجَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ يَلْتَقِيَانِ بَيْنَهُمَا بَرْزَخٌ بَيْنَهُمَا بَرْزَخٌ لَا يَبْغِيَانِ مرج البحرين يلتقيان he mixed or made a tasty water which is the river water come to meet the salty water which is the sea water and in between them comes a barzakh بينهما برزخ لا يبغيان a barrier what that means this barrier belongs to the, to the two worlds this barrier has the attributes of the tasty water, the water of the river, and the salty water, the water of the sea. The same exact concept with the graveyard, was with the barzakh. It belongs to the dunya. It's in the face of this earth. You still see a hole in the ground, but yet it has also the qualities and the attributes of the hereafter, of the unseen. For us living, it's a hole in the ground. But it turns into Jannah. It turns into a hellfire, as we explained right before the break. And inshallah, once we come to talk about Al Barzakh, detail it, we will give evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah, extensive one, explicit one, to prove to you that that hole in the ground is your next home after this world and whatever you do now in a way you're preparing that home you're preparing it to be a garden from paradise or a bit from the bits of the hellfire but quickly here is a beautiful uh, dua that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to make Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhuma fi sahih muslim he said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say Rabbi a'udhu bika min a'thabin fin nar wa a'udhu bika min a'thabin fil qabr Oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from a punishment in the graveyard and I seek refuge with you from a punishment in the graveyard Hadith Abi Hurairah radiyallahu an and the Hadith Fisa Il Bukhari wa Muslim He said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to make this dua after the tashahud, after the final tashahud in the salah, right after finishing the tashahud and before assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adhabi jahannam, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adhabi al-qabr, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min fitnat al-mahya wal-mamat, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min sharri fitnat al-masihid dajjal.
Oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from the punishment in the graveyard, from the punishment in the hellfire, from the fitna of life, fitna of death. I seek refuge with you from the evil fitna of the Antichrist. Abdullah ibn Abbas, in the wording of this hadith, for Sahih Muslim, he said, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to teach the companions this dua like he would teach them a surah from the Quran. Yes, al-barzakh, the graveyard, is a certainty that we're going to have to face. And it is the second phase of that inevitable journey. And it becomes a garden from paradise, a bit from the bits of fire. What you do with the dunya right now? Brothers and sisters in Islam, you will be amazed to learn that as we advance through the phases of that inevitable journey, the time that we spend in each phase is longer. Look, that journey starts with the womb of the mother. Some infants stay seven, some eight, some nine months. Then comes in the dunya. How long do we live in the dunya? Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and the hadith fi sunan al tirmidhi min hadith Abi Hurairah radiallahu an, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, A'maru ummati bayna al sittin wa al sabayin, wa qalilun minhum man yujawizu dalik. The lifespan of my followers, of my ummah, is between 60 years and 7 years, the overall average. Some, of course, will live up to 100, Allah knows best. And some will die before this. But the overall average, 60 to 7 years. So, 7, 8 months, 9 months, in the womb of the mother. Now, the phase life is 60, 70 years. Look at the graveyard, how long? It could be a thousand years, it could be two thousand years, it could be three thousand years, it could be four thousand years. Imagine the people who were buried in the graveyard since the time of Adam, alayhi salam. How many years? Alaf as sinin, thousand of years. Then comes in the next phase, which is the third certainty, which is resurrection. A day brothers and sisters in Islam, that is, and listen to that figure with your heart, 50,000 years long. تَعْرُجُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ إِلَيْهِ فِي يَوْمٍ كَانَ مِقْدَارُهُ خَمْسِينَ أَلْفَ سَنَةِ 50,000 years. Just one day, the day of resurrection. Just one day. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the conditions on this day are out of this world. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives us some of the description. People will be resurrected. Hadith Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma and the Hadith Sahih al-Bukhari. Naked, barefoot, they will be soaking in their sweat because of the sun being so near to their heads, Hadith al-Maqdad ibn al-Aswad. He Sahih Muslim. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the distance is almost a mile. وَجِيءَ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ بِجَهَنَّمْ The hellfire will be brought in the place of gathering. Miserable conditions. It's a certainty. أَلَا يَظُنُّ أُولَٰئِكَ أَنَّهُمْ مَبْعُوثُونَ لِيَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ يَوْمَ يَقُومُ النَّاسُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Are those people do not believe that they will be resurrected to a great day, in a great day, the day when all of mankind will stand before the Lord of all that exists. And it is also a certainty, brothers and sisters in Islam, that on this day, the 50,000 years will be filled 50,000 years for the disbelievers. But for the believers, it will feel like hours. As the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described, Sahih ibn Hibban, Hadith Abi Hurairah, radiallahu an, 
the time when the sun declines to set until it finally sets. Add to this the privileges that they will receive, like being shaded under the throne of Allah or shaded under their sadaqah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, then comes the final and the last certainty, which is the everlasting abode. Jannah or hellfire. This is the fourth and the last certainty of that inevitable journey that will be our topic, insha'Allah, in the episode to come. We will talk about the final two certainties, maybe a little bit more, and then we're going to ask this question, why the Muslims are heedless from these certainties? And we'll offer some cure and remedies, insha'Allah. Join us again, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, to talk about the inevitable journey. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The scale of justice will be broke before man. Now you shall have to explain your whole life span. What you did in the open and what you conceived. From big to small shall today. Your deeds shall then be weighed in a scale. This shall determine if you pass or fail. Heaven and hell shall be brought into vision. Allah and sisters I'd like to say ask for forgiveness and do that today